Welcome to Introduction to Finance. Welcome to Introduction to Finance. Uh, session 9. My name is Greg Pierce, finance coach, and today we're going to talk about net present value and other investment criteria. How do we analyze large investment projects such as Gillette? Gillette might have a project for the Fusion ProGlide, their current razor, and uh, how do they assess that um, this is a good investment? Uh, they may put as much as $1 billion into these type uh, projects. Uh, back when they built their um, uh, track, I'm sorry, Mach 3 version, the Mach 3 version of this razor. They spent about $300 million on marketing and advertising and about $750 million on R&D to build this fairly complex product. Um, now they're up to the Fusion ProGlide and uh, in about $11, $12, $13 billion wet shave market. So it's very important to make good decisions on these major, major investments. You may, uh, again, invest uh, just in marketing and R&D a billion dollars. That's not even including the plant cost. So what are some methods I can use to analyze these major investment projects? Um, we're into the investment section of the course, so this is very appropriate. Six different methods we're going to look at today. First, NPV. How do I calculate NPV? Present value of future cash inflows minus the investment cost. Uh, this is the most popular and the best method of the six methods we'll go through today. Second, payback period. How long does it take to pay back uh, this big in, uh, investment I've made in this project? How many years? So payback period is answered in years. Discounted payback is similar, except we're going to discount the cash inflows and then compare that to the cash outflow. Again, how long does it take to pay back this major, major investment? The fourth method we'll look at um, is average accounting return, average net income divided by average book value. So just by the equation, we know we need to um, calculate a, an income statement for five years and a balance sheet for five years, and then look at the return on investment of this project. Fifth, we're going to look at internal rate of return, or DCF ROI. How do I calculate an internal rate of return? The rate at which my discounted cash inflows equals my cash outflow today. And the point and the rate at which NPV equals zero. Again, a very, very popular method. It has some shortcomings, which we will discuss, but a very, very popular um, method used in industry. And finally, our sixth method for calculating and, and looking at and assessing these major capital investment projects, profitability index, heavily used in government and nonprofits. It's the present value of the cash inflows divided by the cost of the investment. Very popular in nonprofit organizations and in the government. Uh, so these are our six, uh, six of our seven learning objectives. NPV is one method, payback two, discounted payback, AAR, internal rate of return and profitability index. We'll go over all of those in detail. And then we'll look at which of these six methods is most popular in the practice of capital budgeting, our seventh and final learning objective. Um, you may find yourself someday getting into the uh, construction and real estate um, business uh, and do, the question is, do we have a positive NPV project? We're looking for, in the net present value method of assessing these investments, do we have a positive NPV? So you may uh, spend $125,000 to buy some land someday, uh, put some labor and material into that project of about the same amount, $125,000, and come up with a beautiful house, build a beautiful house, uh, which will sell for $300,000. Again, assess, uh, assuming no time value of money here because a, a house can be built quickly in usually three to six months. Uh, we ask ourselves, is this a positive NPV project? So the selling price of the new house is $300,000. We'll call that the market value of the investment. The cost of the investment for us was $250,000. We compare those two and we find we have a positive NPV of $50,000. Good investment. Proceed with the project. Uh, again, if I would have gotten a negative MPV, the decision would be reject the investment, but it looks like this will be a positive investment we're going forward. Uh, so MPV is the first one we're going to talk about. An investment is worth undertaking if it creates value. You may go into the um, housing business or construction business on the side, perhaps, uh, in the evenings. Um, and you want to know if you put some labor and material and buy some land and put some labor and material into it, 
uh, will it be a positive MPV project? Uh, here's an example here where we put $25,000 into some land. We put $25,000 into some labor and materials. And uh, in the very short time, three to six months, we have a house built and uh, we sell for $60,000. Is this a positive MPV project is the question. Um, and the question is, yes, in this case, in a short time frame, very little time value of money, we have a market value of 60000 a cost of 50000 an MPV of 10000 good investment. So the general rule for NPV is uh, positive MPV accept and negative MPV reject. Uh, basically, we go through this process by uh, estimating the initial uh, cash outflow, which we have a pretty good handle on, and, and then we estimate the future cash inflows. And then, again, discounted cash flow analysis, taking these back to today, to the left, uh, at a uh, discount rate, and then estimate the MPV. Let's go into the fertilizer business, just as another example. Um, in this case, uh, $20,000 a year in sales, $14,000 a year in cost, Eight years, uh, salvage value of $2,000, project cost $30,000 today. So the initial cash outflow is $30,000, discount rate of 15%. Is this a good decision? Is this a positive NPV project? So we do a timeline once again. Uh, any of these sessions, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, uh, you want to draw timelines. They will help you analyze these discounted cash flow analyses. Uh, and then you see the cash inflows of 20 per year for eight years. Almost looks like an annuity, doesn't it? And then the uh, 14 uh, of cash outflow, and um, you get a net cash inflow of $6,000 a year. We have that salvage value out there in year eight of $2,000. So we can we think we can, uh, after using it for eight years, we can sell us the equipment for 2K. And then we have our cash flow totals at the bottom. Now, net present value will tell us to take these cash uh, flows discount them back to today at 15% and then compare that to the cash outflow of 30,000. Now, uh, if you look at the, um, the uh, net inflows there, 66666, that looks a lot like an annuity. So we can do a present value annuity on those cash flows and discount them at 15%. And then that 2,000 almost looks like a, a bond uh, face value. We can take that back to today using the future value, present value formula. Um, so the present value of the cash inflows is 27578 uh, and uh, compare that to the uh, cash, that's a cash inflow, and then the cash outflows are negative 30,000 today, so that's today versus today, and we get a negative 2422 as our net present value. So at the 15% discount rate, we have a bad investment here because we have negative MPV. Again, very simply, the MPV rule is, decision rule is MPV positive, good investment, MPV bad, MPV negative, bad investment. So just remember uh, the MPV rule. Uh, here's another example. Suppose we're going to look whether uh, consumer products should be launched. Uh, you get uh, 2000 in the first few years, 4000 in the next two, and 5000 in the last year. It will cost 10000 today to begin production of this. And we're going to discount our cash flows at 10%. Again, we draw a timeline, show the cash flows coming in and then discount them back, divided by 1.1, divided by 1.1 squared, 1.1 cubed, and so on. And then compare those cash inflows uh, by the, uh, with the negative $10,000 of cash outflow today, and we see an MPV positive of uh, $2,300, MPV, or cash flow positive, MPV positive of net of $2,300, so we accept this project.